Hi, hello, my name is Gomer Joseph. I hope you've all been having a great day so far. Welcome back to another True Crime Tuesdays video. If you are new, I welcome you. Today, I'll be discussing the unsolved disappearance of Lars Matank. Researching this case was very tricky and challenging, and I found it to be very strange. When I first came across Lars's case, I had no idea how insane the details were surrounding his disappearance. Now, I encourage you all to do your own research with this case and not to just look at my video for all of the information. Here we go. Lars Wittank was born on February 9th of 1986 in Berlin, Germany to Sandra Matank and for the life of me, I could not find the name of Lars's father. Lars was pretty close to his family. He was a soccer fan, but again, you know, he's from Germany. So he refers to soccer as football. Lars was someone who took his responsibilities seriously. When his father had a stroke, he decided to step up and help out where he was needed. And he was also in a stable relationship. On June 30th of 2014, Lars is 28 years old at this point. So he and five friends travel to Varna, Bulgaria in the Golden Sounds Resort. Lars's friends were having a pretty good time and they stated how they noticed that Lars was enjoying himself in this vacation as well. On July 6th of 2014, Lars and his friends came across other German people in the area. Unfortunately, it was not a very calm or kind exchange. Um, it seems like they were fans because of, you know, how big Germany is. It seems like they were fans of opposing soccer teams. So somehow they got into some sort of disagreement over you know, these rival soccer teams. I couldn't figure out the reason why, but for a while, Lars did separate from his friends for the rest of the night. The next morning, Lars's friends noticed something extremely unexpected. Lars reunited with his friends, especially since he and his friends were planning on going back home to Germany soon. But when he went back to his friends, he pretty much explained to them how the group that they had a disagreement with the other night physically fought with him. And, you know, because of this physical fight, Lars had no choice but to see a doctor. And the doctor noticed how Lars's jaw and eardrum was messed up. Because the injuries were pretty severe, the doctor advised him to stay in Bulgaria lo a bit longer than he expected to just because he needed some treatment and he was prescribed a specific antibiotic. After hearing this, the friends suggested that they just stay with him, but Lars was, you know, pretty much telling them, you know, he'll be fine and, you know, how it wasn't necessary for them to stick around longer than they intended. So Lars's friends gave him, you know, the space that he needed. They decided to go ahead and fly back to Germany after checking out of the hotel. And Lars did check out of this hotel as well, but checked into another hotel called the Hotel Color Varna. The following day, Lars was not acting like himself. From what seems to be out of nowhere, Lars became paranoid and he proceeded to call his mother and went on about how someone was trying to rob and take his life. Since he was, you know, concerned about getting robbed, he was adamant about asking his mother to cancel his credit cards. As for his mother, Sandra, like, I would assume that she's confused and concerned about her son because it seemed like he was having no issues throughout the entire trip because really like the only thing the only strange thing that his friends noticed while they were on vacation with Lars was that he wasn't eating much but again you know they were all having a good time other than the whole little altercation with this other group from Germany. But now all of a sudden she notices how her son seems to be fearing for his life. According to surveillance footage in the hotel, Lars was pretty much pacing all over the place, nervously looking outside of the windows and nervously inspecting 
the hotel walls. Early the next morning on July 8th of 2014, it is 1 a.m., Lars leaves the hotel, but it's pretty much unknown where he headed off to. But he did come back, and later on, he called his mother to tell her that the people who he believed were after him were coming closer. Once Lars reached the Varna airport, he texted his mother, letting her know that he made it to the airport and was on his way back home. While at the airport, he met with the doctor, the airport doctor, and got the all clear from him to travel back home. The doctor's name was Dr. Kosta Kostov, and the thing about Dr. Kostov is that he states how he noticed how Lars was still acting unusual. According to Dr. Kostov, Lars was expressing how concerned he was about the medication that he was prescribed, and Lars was stating how he was taking the medication. But Dr. Kostov states that there was no indication that Lars even took the medication that was prescribed to him. Here's where things get even more strange. Now, a construction worker would enter into the office, and I'm pretty sure, you know, I was a bit I guess like confused and if you're not familiar with this story I can understand that you'd be confused like why is a construction worker going inside of a doctor's office but pretty much I gathered that the airport was going through reservations so the construction worker went in just to do his reservation work or whatever. Now while the construction worker is coming in just to do the renovation, Dr. Kostov states how Lars was beginning to freak out by this, rambling about how he did not want to lose his life there, then rushed straight out of the office. But things only get worse. Now, not only did Lars run straight out of this office, but he rushed all the way out of the airport, leaving all of his belongings behind. Lars ran all the way into the direction of a forest after jumping the fence and since then Lars was never seen again. Eventually his family was notified about his disappearance which understandably made them extremely worried. Now a search team was formed but it seems like they were not able to find anything about where Lars could have gone and there were sightings that were eventually reported but these you know the thing about these sightings was that there was nothing really concrete about them the longer that Lars remains missing his family continues to grow even more worried and even frustrated with the search eventually the family would hire a private investigator who would check into hospitals for the records of John Doe's. And if you're not really, you know, familiar with the term John Doe, John Doe is pretty much the name for like an, un, an unidentified man. Yet after the private investigator was doing his thing, even the private investigator couldn't even find anything that could link to where Lars could be located. Yet, there were still plenty of supposed sightings. For example, like in 2019, a trucker in, I hope I'm saying it right, Dresden, Germany, told police how he picked up this hitchhiker and dropped him off in Shidlow, Germany. After dropping this man off, he heard about Lars's disappearance and told the police how he believes that the man he gave the ride to was Lars. Now, of course, with a case like this, there are plenty of theories. So there is a theory that Lars was suffering from hallucination or that he was beginning to lose his mind because of the medication. But again, according to Dr. Kostov, he claims that Lars never took the medication to begin with. There was also this theory about how Lars ran away to the point where he lost his life, or that he ran away on purpose, or that Lars might have been living on the streets as a homeless man. And that theory was made due to all of these supposed sightings. 
of course, there's, I mean, all of these theories are concerning, but of course, there's the other theory that is pretty concerning about how there's a chance that Lars was, you know, missing due to human trafficking. Still, Lars's family have absolutely no idea what happened and they believe they truly believe that he could still be alive out there somewhere and are working hard to figure out where he is it's been almost nine full years since lars has gone missing his family misses him so much and just wants answers it's one thing to know that your loved one is missing but it's just another thing to know that your loved one was last seen in another country. And because of that fact, there's a possibility that your loved one could be anywhere in the world, but you just have no idea where exactly in the world they could be. I am praying for Lars's family. My prayer is that God would provide them with the answers that they have been desperately searching for for all these years and that they would seek God as they are dealing with these struggles. The God that I serve, the God of the Bible, is an all-seeing God. He knows exactly where Lars is and he knows exactly what happened to him that day. I thank you all for taking the time in your day to watch this video. If you did like this video, please feel free to hit the like button. If you have any thoughts on this case at all, please leave your thoughts in the comment section below. If you'd like to see more videos from me, please feel free to subscribe and click the bell to be notified about the next video. If there is a certain true crime case that you'd like me to cover, go ahead and let me know. I will see y'all for next true crime Tuesdays and I will talk to y'all later.